So welcome to the video. Uh, my name is Pushpinder Gill. Let's go ahead and get started with the uh, concept of probability. Now this is a concept video. We'll be doing a lot of questions in the practice videos of probability. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me just get my pen. So what exactly is probability? Let's understand that first. Probability, let's suppose I have these four balls in a bag, right? There are two blue balls and two red balls. So if let's suppose I pick up a ball, what are the chances that it is going to be a red ball, right? So most of you say, all right, since half of the balls are red balls, so that means there are 50% chances that the ball would be a red ball if I pick up a ball. So how did you come up with that 50% answer? I know 90% of you saying, all right, the answer is 50%, but we need to analyze why did you come up with 50%? See, you said half of the balls are red balls, right? So once you said half of the balls are red balls, that means there is a 50% chance that I'll end up with a red ball if I pick up a ball from the back. So how did this half come? This half come came if I divide the number of red balls by total number of balls, right? So this is how the probability is calculated. It's the total number of your favorable cases divided by the actual total number of cases. So probability is defined as ways in favor divided by total number of ways. Now this is a very simple and traditional method of calculating probability. Probability is always also uh, said as chances and all those things. It can either be take, taken in terms of fractions or it can be taken in terms of percentages. So you just multiply 100 over here and you get your probability in terms of percentage. You remember saying that, all right, there are only 20% chances of this happening. That means out of total 100 cases, 20 cases are such in which this thing is going to happen, right? So this is what probability is. So I hope everyone understood the basic meaning of probability. Let's move ahead and see, uh, understand the probability thing. So probability is ways in favor divided by total number of ways, right? Now, since total number of ways are always are always going to be greater than the ways in favor that means this fraction over here is always going to be between 0 and 1 right because this total number of ways are always going to be greater than ways in favor right so that means the probability is always between 0 and 1 so in case of percentages it's always between 0 and 100 so I hope everyone understood what probability is. Now let's just solve the simplest of the questions and understand the concept of probability even better. So a number is selected at random from the set. What is the probability that it is even? So what is the probability? What does what does the what uh, formula tells us that what is probability? Probability is the number of favorable cases divided by total number of cases. So what are, let's see what are the total number of cases here. Now I have to select a number from this set. So how many numbers can I select? I can select either this, I can this, I this, like this. Likewise, I can select any of these numbers. So if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there are a total of eight numbers to select from and now what do i need i need an even number now it's my turn to see what are the total number of favorable cases that i have so i have to see my favorable cases the number has to be an even number so two is an even number four is an even number similarly 24 is an even number so likewise, my number of favorable cases count up to 2, 2, 4, 24, that is 3. So number of favorable cases is 3. So that means my probability of selecting an even number out of this, it's 3 by 8. Similarly, if I had to select an odd number out of these sets, then it would be easier. The total number of cases are 8. And if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 numbers are odd. That means 
the probability of selecting an odd number from this set is 5 by 8. So I hope everyone is understanding here, right? It's a very uh, simple question just to explain you what probability really is. Now let us understand a few terms over here, right? So what uh, probability, impossible event. So what you understand by impossible event, we usually say, okay, which is not possible, which cannot happen, right? So since you see over here, probability is a number which is from zero to one. It lies between zero and one only, right? So the event that has that is impossible has probability equal to zero. So if the probability of event happening is zero, that means it is not going to happen, right? Definitely not going to happen. There are no chances that that event is going to happen. Let's say for example, I throw a dice. Let's suppose I throw a dice and I get the number to be a three digit number, right? I throw a normal dice and I get a number to be the three digit number on the dice, which is not possible guys, because a dice has only six numbers. So you understand what is, what is an impossible event is, right? The probability of an impossible event is always zero. So now let's see uh, the other part of the story that is a certain event. Now, as again, I told you that the probability of an event lies between zero and one, right? So a certain event is an event that is definitely going to happen. Let's suppose uh, death, right? Death is an in inevitable truth that is going to happen. So the probability of an event that is certain is equal to one right so probability of an event that is certain is equal to one that definitely this is going to happen right for example let me just take the same example i throw a dice and i get i, I can get either of uh, of the numbers one two three four five six i can get any, any of the numbers so probability of that thing happening is uh it's 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 certain right it's one so we have done the impossible event and we have done the certain event, which is called the definite event as well, right? Now let's move forward. So the next event is the equally likely events. So equally likely events are the events which has the same probability. Let's suppose there is event A and there is event B, right? The probability of event A happening is equal to the probability of event B happening, right? Then they are supposed to be equally likely events. Let's suppose, for example, if I throw a dice, let me just go again with the same example. Uh, there is one can happen, two can come, three can come, four can come and five can come and six, six can come. And the probability of each of the event is the same, right? Any number can come, right? So that means they are equally likely events, right? So that means equally likely events are the events which has the same probability. Similarly, now let's see the mutually exclusive events. Now, as the name suggests, these are the events which cannot happen together. These are the events which cannot happen together. Uh, for example, let's suppose the probability of heads and tails coming in a coin in one throw. So that means these both of events cannot happen together. You're understanding my point? So mutually exclusive events are the probability of those happening together means probability of happening event A and B together is equal to zero, right? So mutually exclusive events are those events which are totally exclusive of each other and probability of their happening together is equal to zero. Now comes the independent events. Now, this is a tricky situation here. Now, independent events are the events which has no connection between them. Let's suppose there is event A and there is event B, right? Let's suppose event A, me having a cup of coffee, fine. Event A is me having a cup of coffee and event B, is you watching this video, right? So these two events 
are independent of each other. That means me having a cup of coffee is not depend on you watching the video, right? So these uh, both the cases are independent of each other, right? Now, one are independent events, then there are dependent events. Now, what are dependent events? The dependent events are which totally depend upon each other, right? I'm sorry. Dependent events are which depend upon each other. Let's suppose there is event A and event B. The event A is me teaching you the concept and event B is your learning, right? So I can say that that event B is dependent on event A. Why? Because without my teaching, you will not be able to learn the concept, right? Uh, so that means event B is dependent upon event A. I'm just taking a hypothetical example here, right? So I hope you understood what are independent events and what are dependent events. So in case of independent events, the probability that both the events will happen that means a will happen and b will happen is equal to the product of the probability of both the events happening individually right so probability of both the events happening that is probability of a intersection b which pretty much shows that both the events are happening together is equal to probability of event A happening into probability of event B happening, right? So I hope everyone understood what are independent events and what are mutually exclusive events. Now let's move further and let's just do a question over here. Uh, the probability that two persons A and B can solve a problem independently is 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. So what is the probability that both A and B can solve the problem? So you can see from this question that probability that event A is going to happen is equal to 0 0.4 and the probability that event B is going to happen is equal to 0 0.6. Now I have to calculate that both the events should happen together. That is nothing but probability of A intersection B, which is equal to probability of event A happening into probability of event B happening. I'm sorry for this guys. So that is equal to 0 0.4 into 0 0.6 which is nothing but 0 0.24 right so that means there is 24 percent chances that both would be able to solve the problem i hope everyone is understanding we'll go into depth into this concept a bit later right so let's just move forward so probability of an event not happening right so let's suppose uh, let me say this circle here it denotes the probability that event a happens right and this square over here is the complete universe fine so this is the universe and this circle represents that the probability that event a will happen let's suppose you drinking a cup of coffee right so let's suppose the, the, the probability of you drinking a cup of coffee is equal to p of a now, what is the probability that you will not drink a cup of coffee, right? Now, as I've told you earlier, the maximum probability is always equal to one, right? This is, that means this event is definitely going to happen. So if I say that probability of you drinking a cup of coffee or the probability of you not drinking a cup of coffee, so that event is certain is it's certainly going to happen. Either you'll drink coffee or you're not going to drink. Are you not going to drink coffee? So that means if I combine both of them, you drinking a cup of coffee and you not drinking a cup of coffee. Let me denote it by that. So this event here is a certain event, and the sum of this event is equal to one. So I can say that the probability of you not 
drinking a cup of coffee is 1 minus the probability of you drinking a cup of coffee right so i hope you're understanding here the probability of me having uh, let's say a, a, a samosa it's it's x that and probability of me not having a samosa these are certain events either i'll have the samosa either i will not have the samosa either i'll sleep either i'll not sleep so these are the certain events and they add up to one so i can say that probability of an event not happening is equal to one minus the probability of that even happening right i hope everyone is understanding over here so let's move forward fine now let us combine two events so these are the uh, now we are now we are moving towards the question side the, these are how the questions are made now there are two events right uh, i don't know whether they are independent of each other or whether they are dependent upon each other right so what happens is now let's suppose this is an event a and this is an event b right so this over here is an event a let's suppose this is an event of uh, me attending the college right me attending the college fine this is the event of me attending the college and let's suppose this is the event of me getting a job fine so this circle over here represents that I am going to attend a college and this represents that I am going to get a job, right? Let me make the universe as well. And let's suppose this is the complete universe, which pretty much you know, has everything. So this area, if you, if you see this area, which I've shaded represents of me only attending the college, not getting a job, but only attending the college this area over here anyhow represents me getting a job but not attending the college and this area represents me attending a college and as well as getting a job so i have pretty much explained you all the possibilities that can happen right so let's suppose if i want to calculate that either i will attend the college or I should get a job. So what is the pre probability of that happening, right? So either I get attend a college or I get a job. Pretty much anything can happen. So I am looking for this complete area over here. So let me do one thing. Let me add the P of A and the P of B, right? I hope everyone is understanding what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I want to calculate the probability of an event of either of the event happening. I want, okay, I should either attend the college or I should either get a job. Both can happen, even anything can happen. So I have added probability of me attending the college and probability of me getting a job. Now, most of you will be saying, okay, all right, you've done the job. But if you look carefully over here, let me denote this area, the, the, the both area, uh, let's suppose, let me denote it by E. Now, if you see, I've added this complete area, that means I've added E here, right? Similarly, I've added this complete area as well. That means I've added E as well. That means I've added E twice. That means this area has been added twice. And for me to calculate the, the, the quantity of this complete area fairly, I would need to subtract E once so that in a net effect, I have calculated the complete area only once. So for that, I have to subtract the probability of both the event happening right i hope everyone understood this i'm um, sorry for this mess guys so probability of either of the event happening is equal to probability of one event happening plus the second event happening minus both of the events happening 
So I hope everyone understood this over here. If you're not able to understand this Venn diagram, I suggest you to go watch uh, my set, and set theory video where I've been explaining this in a lot more detail, right? So this pretty much explains all the concepts of two events when the probability of either of them can happen, right? So let's move forward. Now, what if the events are mutually exclusive? So what do you mean by mutually exclusive events? As discussed in this videos, the mutually exclusive events are those events which cannot happen together. So that means for those events, this thing is nothing but zero, right? So I can say that the probability of two mutually exclusive events happening, the probability of either of them happening is equal to just the sum of probability of A happening and probability of B happening, right? So which is nothing but this because probability of both the events happening is zero. So whenever I get a question wherein two events are mutually exclusive, I need to assume the probability of both the event happening is zero and I straight away can use this formula. So I hope everyone understood this. Uh, now let's move forward. Now uh, it's again the same thing, right? What is the probability that either one of them, at least one of them event is going to happen, right? So I have to calculate the probability of at least one of the events. So how do I go about and calculate that? Now I'm going to give you two tools to calculate this event here. So now let's see what those two tools are. Now I need to calculate the probability of either of the event happening. That means I need to calculate that either A can happen or B can happen, right? So I explained earlier, you can easily calculate, okay, A or B, that means I add A, uh, I add the probability of B and I deduct the probability of both the events happening, right? I can do that, fine. Or if you want to calculate at least one, right? So if you look at the sample space over here, guys, uh, you need at least one of the events happening, right? So you can say that, that either A happens and B does not happen. This is one scenario. Or A cannot happen and B can happen or there is one last scenario that both of them together can happen. So I hope you're understanding over here what I'm trying to do. I've just listed down all the events, right? So you say, okay, this is one event happening here. A is happening, B is not happening, right? So you know the probability of B happening. From that, you can calculate the probability of B not happening. Similarly, A not happening, B happening. Similarly, both of them happening. Add all of them, you're gonna get answer equal to this, right? So this is one way of doing that. Now let me tell you one smart way of calculating at least one. So what does at least one means? At least one means this whole area, right? This whole area is at least one. And this is one complete universe. What if I calculate the probability of either of the event not happening, that both of them do not happen. So that will give me this complete universe, right? And if I subtract one from them, right? So that means either at least one of them happens or both of them don't happen. This is the scenario here. So I can calculate it by one minus probability of event A not happening, and probability of event B not happening. So this is even a smarter way to do that, right? I'm sorry for that. So I hope everyone understood this over here that uh, uh, let me just take a quick recap, recap here. Now we had to find that probability of at least one of the event happening. So I, I calculated with this simple method here, probability of A or B is equal to probability of A happening plus B happening minus uh, the, the intersection of two, or I listed down all the 
possible cases which could happen or I opted for the smarter way I listed out the way which is uh, the, 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 the way which is not according to what I want the answer and then I subtract one from that and I can get the answer right so let's go ahead and move forward now I have to find the probability of exactly one event happening that A happens and B does not happen or B happens and A does not happen this is what I want and this is your answer guys I've told you the answer the answer is ex exactly one even even should happen if A happens B should not happen right and if B happens A should not happen end of story this is your probability that exactly one of the event happens right so this is your answer so you just calculate the probability of A happening multiplied with the probability of probability of B not happening plus whatever is there ahead, right? So I hope everyone is understanding how simple it is becoming right now, right? You just uh, understand the question and the answer is there in front of you. Now probability of event both happening. This we have done a lot of times. The probability that both the events will happen, I'm going to leave you to that that is probability of a sorry for the handwriting guys into probability of b right so this is nothing but probability of both the events happening right so let's just do some questions now right so that we have learned a lot of theory i'll just give you a couple of uh, three four questions here we'll be doing a lot more question in the practice video the probability that shooter a can hit a target is 0.8 the probability that uh, B can hit a target is this what is the probability that at least one of them can hit the target now if you go back uh, if you just rewind the video I told you a smarter way of calculating I told you three ways of calculating uh, at least one the first way is the probability that the probability that event A happens plus probability that even B happens right so probability of a happening and the probability of b happening minus the probability of both the events happening right so this is nothing but uh, 1 0.8 plus 0.6 that is 1.4 minus 0 uh, sorry uh, it's uh, 8 6 to 48 that is 0 0.48 right so if I calculate that this is nothing but 0 0.92 right so I got my answer here right the second way which I did was that I, I, I just uh, recommend you to rewind the video back where I explained at least one so that you don't uh, get disturbed by this so probability of event a happening into probability of B not happening so probability of b happening is 0 0.6 so probability of b not happening is 0.4 that is 1 minus 0 0.6 plus probability of b happening into probability of a not happening that is 0.2 right plus the probability of both the events happening so which is nothing but the answer again gives me 0.92 now let's go for the smarter way guys the smarter way was one minus probability of both the events not happening so if this even happening is 0 0.8 so probability of not happening is 0 0.2 similarly the probability of not happening here is 0 0.4 and if I subtract 1 minus 0 0.08 I get my answer to be 0.92 so isn't our method consistent overall so I want to see I, I, I know this is a smarter way you'll be saying why not learn this but I want you to give you all the tools right so sometimes this will help you sometimes this will help you every time all of them can help you but sometimes this uh, any of the any of them can be a more easy to apply right so let's just move forward I hope everyone understood this question 
right so now we're going to do a simple concept that is odds in favor and odds against the favor which is pretty much easy right so the odds in favor of an event happening is a ratio of probability of that event happening by probability of event not happening so the odds against the favor is probability of not happening by probability of happening so uh, i know if if you want the favor uh, this is how i remember it the odds with the favor uh, odds in favor the probability of happening is at the top and odds against the favor the probability of not happening is at the top the rest each and everything is same right so let's move forward i hope it's uh, understandable now let's just do some questions here right so so that you understand the concept within the video only so uh, in this question uh, among a group of 2500 people 35 percent invest in municipal bonds 18 percent invest in oil stocks and seven percent invest in both so if one person is to be selected randomly from these people what is the probability that uh, the one who invests in municipal bonds but not in oil stocks now if you see the question over here is in terms of probability so we do not need this 2500 people we can easily go with the percentages because probability is a fraction it's not an exact number so with the percentages as well you can easily calculate it now it says now how many people are there if it's a percentage so there are a total of 100 people and if i draw the diagram 35% of the people invest in municipal bonds and 18% of the people invest in oil stocks and 7% is the both, right? Now he's asking, what is the probability that the person selected will be the one who invests in municipal bonds but not oil stocks which is nothing but this area municipal bonds but not oil stock if this whole area is 35 right let me just make it bigger if this whole area is 35 right and this area is 7 that means this area will be 28 right so 28 percent of the people invest in municipal bonds but not in oil stocks that means the probability is 28 by 100 which is nothing but 0 0.28 you can either, either say 28 percent or you can say 0.28 is the probability so i hope everyone is understanding this question it, it looks like a big question but if you see it closely it's not as big as and the question confuses you once you bring this 2500 people into picture so once you see the question is asking you fractions percentages are given in the question go with the percentage do not calculate start calculating the figures right so let's move forward okay so the raffle tickets consecutively uh, numbered consecutively from 101 through 350 in a box what is the probability that the uh, ticket selected at random will have uh, a number with 100 digits of 2 so what is the formula for probability guys probability of an event happening is defined by uh, cases in favor by total cases so what are the total cases here how many numbers do i have to choose from i have to choose from any number from 101 till 350 which is pretty much a uh, 250 numbers right so it's 200 and i'm sorry yeah it's 250 numbers all right and i have to choose numbers which have hundreds digit as two now which are the numbers which has hundreds digit as two it starts from 200 and it ends at 299 right apart from that all of the numbers have different digits and these are the only numbers which have 100 digits from 2 and if you count all these numbers these are 100 numbers right so uh, now you'll be saying why 99 now let me tell you guys uh, 200 is also included you're understanding my point it's not that i'm starting my counting from 201 i'm starting my counting from 200 tell me how many di digits are there from 0 to 5 it's not 5 if you calculate it's 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 which is 6 numbers 
right? Because zero is also counted. Over here, zero is also counted. That, that means there are 100 numbers. So the probability is 100 by 250, right? So I hope everyone understood. It was an easy question just to explain you what probability is. We'll be doing the complex questions in the practice video, right? So I hope everyone understood this. Okay, let's see this question as well. 60% uh, of the members of a study group are women and 45% of those members are lawyers. And if one member is selected, what is the probability that uh, it will be a woman lawyer? So since it's a percent, let me assume that there are 100 people. Now this is what I call guys, my tree, tree approach. This pretty much helps you a lot, and especially in GRE, GMAT. This tree approach is going to uh, give you uh, a lot of benefit. Now let's see how to do this tree approach. Pretty much simple. So I assumed 100 people and 60% are women. So that means if I draw a branch, 60 are women and I can say that 40 are men, right? Fine. Now 45% of those women are lawyers. That means 45% of these women are lawyers. So 45% of the 60 guys, it's not this 100. So I hope everyone is understanding why I chose 45% of 60 rather than 100 because it's saying 45% of uh, the woman, right? So if I calculate it, it comes out to be 27 women. They are lawyers, right? So now he is asking, what is the probability that the member selected is a woman lawyer? So I have women here and I have lawyers here which are women, which are equal to 27. So that means out of 100 people, if I select one person, there are 27 chances that my woman that person is going to be a woman lawyer hence the probability is 0 0.27 or it can say 27 percent as well right so i hope everyone understood this question here it was pretty simple question right so i hope everyone understood the concept that i'm trying to explain here not the question so let's move forward okay so if a coin is tossed three times what is the probability on an at least one of the coins will turn up tails. Now guys, I told you, if someone asks you at least one, you just say one minus of that event not happening. So how many cases are there that, that even at least one of them will not have tails? That means all of them are going to have heads, right? That means all of them are going to have heads. Okay, alright. So let me just list that those cases for you. So I'm tossing three coins here, right? So I'm going to toss three coins. So the only case in which at least one of one of one tails does not come is I get three heads. Apart from that, each case has is going to have at least one tail. So that means I have found one case which does not apply to that condition and I subtract one from that I can get all the probability of getting at least one of the tails so what is the probability of getting three heads so probability of getting one head is one by two because out of two head and tails head can come similarly probability of getting the second head is one by two and the probability of getting third head is one by two which is nothing but equal to one by eight so the probability that at least one tail comes is nothing but 7 by 8. So I hope everyone understood this question. It's very critical because if you start uh, jotting out the cases for uh, the at least one of the tails, it's going to take you a little bit time, right? So this is much smarter way. And we're going to do uh, the, the, the coin thing in detail in, in some further videos, right? So let's just go ahead and do the next question. All right. So the probability that A, B, and C can hit a target is uh, it's one by three and one by four and one by five respectively. If the result of one person does not affect the other, so we have to find these four questions. So I would recommend you 
to go ahead and pause this video right now and solve all the questions and later on you can match them with what I do right so let's go ahead and pause it all right fine so let's see uh, how did you fare so what is the probability that none of them hits the target so that means this should be the multiplication of probability that a does not hit hits the target b does not hits the target and c does not hits the target which is if a hits the target the probability is 1 by 3 the probability of a not hitting the target is this b not hitting the target is this and c not hitting the target is this so if you see this and this gets cancelled and the probability that none of them hits the target is this right now we have to find the probability that all of them hits the target that a also hits the target b also hits the target and c also hits the target which is nothing but the multiplication of all the probability which is 1 by 3 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 5 which is equal to 1 by 60 right I hope everyone understood now we have to find the probability that exactly one of them hits the target now this is a, uh, a little bit tricky case so there are three cases in that the probability that a hits the target and B doesn't and C doesn't plus another case that A does not hit the target but B does and C doesn't so this is one case plus A hits A doesn't hit B doesn't hit but C hits so these are the three cases now you understand guys whenever a case differs we have to add and within that particular case we have to multiply right so uh, this these are the all three cases you find the probability and you're going to get the answer so uh, let me just do it for you a little bit a probability that a uh, hits the target is 1 by 3 so into probability b does not hit that is 3 by 4 if right into probability that c does not hit it's 4 by 5 plus you solve this one here you solve this one here and you calculate the answer so i hope everyone understood how i calculated exactly one of them how it hits the target now what is the probability that exactly two of them hit the target now you must be thinking all right so let's go ahead and uh, do that so uh, at exactly two of them hits the target so how are you going to do that so a hits the target b hits the target C doesn't right similarly A does not hit the target and B hits and C hits similarly A hits B does not and C hits calculate that you have your answer right so I hope everyone understood what I did here I just found the number of cases and I just added them right so this is how you can do this question right so let's just uh, move ahead and uh, do the last question of the video so in this question uh, Xavier, Yuan and Zelda each try independently to solve a problem and they, if they solve it the probability of them solving it is 1 by 4, 1 by 2 and 5 by 8 respectively so let me just remove this and it's redundant what is the probability that these two hit the target and this doesn't it's very simple guys now I hope watching this video you will be able to easily solve this question right this is a very easy question this hits probability 1 by 4 this hits probability 1 by 2 this doesn't since the probability is 5 by 8 the probability of not doing is 3 by 8 you calculate that you have your answer right so I hope everyone understood what we did over here we learned the basics of the probability right so uh, Keep sticking for more videos. So I'll be posting more videos on the same topic, the probability topic. And uh, thank you for watching the video and thank you for sharing it because I know you'll like it and I know you're going to share it on your Facebook, Twitter, wherever, whichever way you can because this is the only currency through which we uh, survive, right? So thank you for watching this video. This is my email address. In case uh, you, you want to send me an email, you want to send me a feedback, please, please, I would love to have your feedback and uh, thank you very much and see you in next video.